Okay. So thanks to the previous speaker for leaving a few ad additional minutes for me. So I'm gonna take full advantage of it. <laughs> so I'm Rachel, and I'm going to try to tell you about our new work on black box construction of concurren concurrently secure protocols. This is joint work with Rafa uh, Rafael at Cornell. Okay, so as you have heard many times, the problem that we're looking at is this uh, secure multi-party computation problem. And in particular, <coughs> the goal here is to allow a set of mutually distrustful players to be able to collectively, collaboratively compute any function on their own by just sending a few messages to each other. And two things we want to guarantee is the first correctness, that is, the output of the computation needs to be delivered correctly, and second, privacy, that the private inputs of each player should remain hidden. And we would like this to hold even when there's no honest majority in the protocol execution. So these two intuitive requirements in the literature is formalized by this beautiful concept called a simulation paradigm, where we would like to compare the real world where players simply send messages to each other with an ideal world where they get help from a trusted third party who simply compute the function for them. And uh, we would like to say that the real world is actually as correct and private as the ideal world, and the meaning that for every adversary in the real world launching some attack, there will be an, another adversary in the ideal world who can launch the same attack. So if that's the case, then intuitively this must be secure because in an ideal world, there's no attack. And therefore, there will be no attack in the real world either. So here, slightly more formally, by saying launching the same attack, what we really mean is that it's going to achieve the same effect on correctness and privacy. And in particular, for correctness, we would like the output of every player in both worlds to be the same. And for privacy, we would like to say the simulator can learn whatever the real adversary can learn. How? By simply simulate its view. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on a specific type of adversary who always performs static malicious corruption. <coughs> okay, great. So traditionally, this multi-party computation problem is considered in a standalone setting. But just as motivated by the previous talk already, this is not how the real world looks like. The real world looks like this. So there are many sets of players executing many different protocols or at once. And it is possible that now an adversary can potentially participate in many protocol execution and launch some kind of coordinated attack. So what we want is that we want the real world where many executions of different protocols can simultaneously remain as correct and private as the many executions in the ideal world with independent trusted third party. So, as we have heard the name, the most desirable and the strongest formulation of this intuitive requirement is universal compos um, composability. It is most desirable because it really put forward the strongest concurrency requirement. However, because it's so strong, it becomes impossible. So in order to get around this impossibility without, and in particular without going into additional use of trusted infrastructure, many previous work has started to consider a relaxed notion of security called a super polynomial time simulation, where we simply allow the simulator to run a little bit longer. And along the same line, there have been a few works trying to propose related notions, relaxed security notions, where they put a precise, more precise condition on how much more powerful those simulator can be. But in general, overall, in all those notions, by allowing the simulator to be more powerful, the good news is that now concurrent security becomes possible. So great, however, here I would like to argue that these results so far are only feasibility results only. Why? Really due to the nature of their non-black box construction, where there's a ton of cop reduction flying around in the <coughs> protocol. So naturally, here we would like to seek black box solutions, where then we, we will have automatically no cop reduction, and potentially will give us more efficient protocols. So where do we stand with respect to black box multi-party computation protocol? 
So in the standalone setting, great. The problem is basically solved. After a long line of research, so far we have constant round the black box multi-party computation protocol from the minimal assumption of some honest OT. However, when we move to the concurrent setting, the situation become much less complete. And the only positive results we know are those unconditionally secure UC protocols using very strong trusted setup like ideal OT or hardware tokens. And in fact, we know no black box construction in any weaker setup model or in the plane model. So naturally the question is that can we have it? Can we get black box concurrently secure protocol in the plane model? And in this work, we provide you such a construction. So we give a black box construction of concurrent secure multi-party computation protocol in the plane model. Our protocol is based on the minimal assumption of some honest OT and <coughs> It achieves security in this model called the UC with super polynomial time helper without, you don't have to know the detail of this model, but just keep in mind that it directly implies super polynomial time security and also enjoys universal composition. Okay, so great. How do we do that? So the result is achieved in two steps. So first of all, it follows from the classical result that every functionality can be implemented using ideal OT. So this step is unconditional, therefore by definition black box, and they achieve security in the UC model. So the main body of the work is really try to implement OT using a stand, a semi, a stand alone semi honest OT in a black box way. So previous works achieve this step in the standalone setting. And in this work, we try to tackle the concurrent setting and we implement OT in the UC with super polynomial time helper model. So the main tool that we use in this step is a black box construction of a notion called a CCA secure commitment, which was first introduced by Kanati Ling and Pass in 2010. And this is really the key notion that enables our result. So let me first try to tell you what it is. So a CCA secure commitment at a very high level can be viewed as the commitment analog of CCA2 encryption. So look at a man in the middle execution where there is an adversary trying to break the hiding property of a left commitment while having access to an oracle that breaks commitment of its choice. Here by breaking we mean that for every commitment that was, uh, the adversary sent to the oracle, the oracle will return back the committed value in this commitment if it's valid, otherwise it gives bot. So I want to note that in fact this formulation is slightly different from the original definition in cell P10. Uh, there they consider a stronger oracle that gives also the decommitment information besides from the committed value. The reason that here we're considering this weaker oracle is because in order to get a black box construction, we can in fact only achieve this weaker notion. But luckily as we show in the paper that this weaker notion also suffices for building concurrently secure protocol. Okay, so now with this oracle in mind, we will see that a, com a commitment scheme is chosen commitment attack secure or CC secure. If in such a man in the middle execution with the committed value oracle, one of the two things happen. Well, either he forwards the left commitment to the oracle, therefore trivially he gets a committed value, I guarantee no security. Well, or as long as this does not happen, then the left hand side committed value must remain hidden. So this is really exactly the same, a copy, the twin brother of the CCA2 encryption. So in the literature, there is a very closely related notion called a concurrent uh, nominable commitment. Some of you may have been wondering what's the relation between them. So nominable commitment requires that the diversity should not be able to commit to any related values that's uh, with the commitment that he received. So this definition can be equivalently formulated as allowing the diversity having access to the committed value oracle at the end of the whole execution and getting all the committed values back in parallel. So naturally, immediately we have that CC's commitment is stronger and implies nominability. Okay, great. 
So now with this definition of CCA secure commitment in mind, I can tell you the results in this work uh, more formally in two theorems. So the theorem one says that there is a black box construction of CCA secure commitment from the minimal assumption of one-way function. And the second theorem says that once you give me such a commitment and apply some honest OT protocol, we can black boxly implement the idea of OT functionality in the concurrent setting. So for the first theorem, to give such a black box construction, we actually have to borrow many techniques from previous works, in particular like techniques behind the non-black box construction of CCA commitment. We used the black box trapdoor commitment construction in PW08, and we used the cut and choose technique for consistency checking, originally introduced for building black box nominable encryptions. And a lot of work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So there's lots of interesting ideas going on in this step, but because it's so complicated, I'm going to spare you this part in this talk. And just focus on the second theorem. So what I want to show you is that really CC secure commitment is the key notion, the right notion for building black box concurrent secure MPC protocol. And in fact, I would like to argue that even without the first theorem, theorem two is interesting on its own because if in practice, we're willing to assume that some practical schemes like a yes is a CC commitment, then plug it into theorem two, we directly get a very efficient constant round black box concurrent MPC protocol. Okay. So let's finally try to get our hands dirty a little bit, try to prove theorem two. So first, I uh, just trust me that it follows from previous work that we can in fact start with something stronger, not a somehow honest OT, but malicious sender OT. That is already secure against the malicious sender, but only secure against the somehow honest receiver. And the task here is to try to use some classical approach so that we can lift up the security against the semi honest receiver to security against the malicious receiver. So roughly the protocol will look like this, where the sender and the receiver first, they do in parallel many 2N malicious sender OT executions using completely random inputs. So at this point, notice that the, each of these basic OT execution is only secure against the semi honest receiver. So what we would like to have is that we want to enforce this actual malicious receiver to behave honestly in those OT executions. So in the non-black box world, it's trivial. This is like crypto 101, right? Give us zero knowledge proof that the receiver has acted honestly. However, in the black box world, we can't do that. Instead, we will use the cut and choose technique, which says, ask the sender to choose half of those OT executions at random and the request to the receiver to send back the randomness used in those OT executions. And the sender would only accept if the receiver indeed acted honestly according to those random coins that they reviews in those OT executions. So now think if a receiver can pass such a test with respect to so many OT executions chosen at random, then it must be that it has acted honestly in most of the OT executions. Otherwise, it would have been caught with high probability. So with this very strong guarantee, we can then use some known sub-protocol called the OT combiner to try to utilize the rest, of those, uh, the rest of the OT execution that hasn't been opened to transmit the real input. Oh, well, this is awesome because it seems like this simple protocol works. We already have a protocol that is secure against the malicious receiver. Well, there is only one catch. That is, the catch is the cut and choose. Make the protocol lose its security against the malicious sender now. So without going into too much detail, let me directly tell you where the problem is. The problem is now in order for a sec security proof against the malicious sender to work out, the simulator while acting as the receiver, need to be able to bias the set that it, that it needs to open. But there's no way of doing it right now with this protocol because here the malicious sender will simply dictate the set T. 
So naturally, to solve it, we're going to change this protocol so that the sender and the receiver will participate jointly in a coin tossing protocol to decide the set to be cut. And now with the coin tossing, the simulator can bias the set to be cut. And the security proof will go through. So what I have just shown you is that very, very, at a very high level, roughly speaking, give, you, uh, give me a semi-honest OT protocol and a coin tossing protocol, we can implement ideal OT in the standalone setting. And this is indeed what previous work has shown. So now when we move to the concurrent setting, the main issue is that I need a much stronger coin tossing protocol. I need a coin tossing protocol that's in, in fact simulation sound. What it means is that no diversity can bias the coin tossing without even if the simulator <laughs> is doing so. Or more formally to see the problem, consider this main middle execution where the diversity is participating in many left and many right hand side coin tossing ex executions. Now here the simulator comes along and it wants to bias the coin tossing without for each of the right execution. In the first execution it says 42. In the second execution it says 42 again. Well, it can do that. So the requirement now is that even when the adversary is receiving those biased coin tossing executions, we would like to say that if he, he himself cannot bias the coin toss result on the left hand side. So our result shows that as long as we have such a simulation sound coin tossing protocol and plus a semi honest OT, then we can implement ideal OT in the concurrent setting in a very similar way as I have just told you. So now everything, all the tasks have reduced down to constructing such a simulation sound coin tossing protocol. How do we do that? We're going to use the CC secure commitment. So I'm going to, I guarantee you this construction is really simple. Everyone is going to get it. Okay. So how do I construct such a coin tossing protocol? Take the vanilla coin tossing protocol, everybody knows, and simply replace the first commitment with a CC secure commitment. So why is this uh, simulation sound? Look at this uh, main the middle execution. How can a simulator bias the coin tossing without on the right hand side? It can do so if it can break the CC secure commitment in the first message. So now it follows from the CC security that even if the simulator has access to a committed value oracle in order to bias the coin tossing result, the left hand side CC secure commitment is still hiding and therefore the adversary cannot bias the coin tossing result on the left hand side. Done. And this concluded the proof for theorem two. So in summary, what I have shown you in this talk is that we give a black box construction of concurrent secure multi-party computation protocol in the play model. And uh, the key <coughs> construction is a black box CC secure commitment, which I actually didn't tell you about uh, how it is constructed, but just I want to really highlight the point that I think CC, secure, CC security is the key notion. And the reason being that in a black box construction, there's lots of cut and choose, lots of opening, and we would like to guarantee that some security will hold even with respect to openings. So one catch unsatisfactory part of our result is that the construction has a very uh, high round complexity. In fact, it is, it's an order n rounds. So one obvious question is, can we get better rounds? Okay. So that's all what I want to tell you, thank you.